Hi, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing the 2017 AP Physics 1 free response questions. Uh, we're on number two here, so let's get into it. A student wants to determine the coefficient of static friction between a long, flat wood board and a small wood block. Describe an experiment for determining the coefficient of static friction between the wood board and the wood block. Assume equipment usually found in the school physics laboratory is available. One, draw a diagram of the experimental setup of the board and block. In your diagram, indicate the quantity that you measure and draw. So you want something that's determining the coefficient of static friction, right? So uh, between a wood board, so let's say I have a block and a board, okay? And I want, I want to know what the coefficient of static friction is. What I might do is, um, and I'm not going to write out the words because that would just take too long. It would be really annoying. I'll put a pulley here and put a string. And I'm going to have like something that um, adjusts the amount of force I'm pulling here. Because static friction occurs like that coefficient. You want to know like when, um, when, um, when it starts moving, when it starts accelerating. Okay, so I can adjust the weight of something like this by by filling this bucket with different sized masses that I can measure. And if I know the mass of this block, um, then I know that um, the the normal force is equal to just equal to the uh, mass of the block times g. So n equals mbg. And the force of friction would be mu static mbg, right? Like mu times the normal force and so um all i need to do is i can figure out this force by the mass of the you know the bucket mass of the weight here right and g actually cancels so i can find the static friction by 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 knowing like how much mass i have to put in before it starts sliding and um um the mass of the block itself and i divide the two so this I would experimentally determine by mo modifying the weight in here. And here I would measure by the scale, by, by measuring the weight of this block. And that would be sufficient. Um, so I, 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 you know, I would write all that out, but that's, that's kind of in general how you would do something very simple. Okay, so a physics class consisting of six lab groups want to test the hypothesis that the coefficient of static friction between the board and the block equals the coefficient of kinetic friction between the board and the block. Each group determines the coefficients of kinetic and static friction between the board and the block. The group's results are shown before. Okay, so this is what they determine the coefficient of kinetic friction and the coefficient of static friction. Based on the data, what conclusion should the students make about the hypothesis that the coefficients of static and kinetic friction are equal? Um... That's kind of weird. Um, I would say they're not equal. Uh, lab group five messed up because this data is so different. Like the 0.74 is so much bigger than 0.23, but everyone else is pretty consistent. So I'm going to say group five, this is kind of a weird question, is an outlier because their data is very different. from the other group, from the other groups. And then basically the rest of the data is basically showing that the static friction is higher, right? So here, a metal disc is glued to the top of the wood block. The mass of the block disc system is twice the mass of the original block. Does the coefficient of static friction between the bottom of the block and the board increase, decrease, or remain the same when the disc is at? It remains, the, the, the coefficient of static friction remains the same because it's a property of the block itself. Now, um, the amount of force it would take to make the thing move increases for sure. But the, the surface interface between the wood block and the wood board would be the same. And so um, that's why it would remain the same. And that's kind of the reasoning I would use. And um, is, are there more questions to this? No, that's the last of that question. So let's look at this. Uh, oh, they use an incline. And so they measure the angle, which is fine. It doesn't matter. This is fine. If you measure the angle and then you, you found the angle in which the block started by, you know, like this is cool too because they're they're adjusting how much force 
is happening and they're adjusting the normal force so they're just um finding it but like ours is our, my setup was fine too um you, you don't have to do their exact setup this is one of those that like there's like multiple right answers but this is a good setup and maybe a, a nice one to to remember uh do, 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 do. you gotta derive it you replace the normal force with mg implicit use of newton's second law blah blah blah, blah, blah. okay yeah that's fine um Kinetic and are not equal. Group five is outlier. That's right. The static friction is a property of two surfaces. That's what I said. The interface. When I said that, the interface is the same. So that's it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, please leave a comment, like, or subscribe um, if you have anything to say or just appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next free response question. Thanks.